Well, joining us on this broadcast is a very, very special guest, if I may say so, uh, Lieutenant General Subrata Saha, who is also a member of the National Security Advisory Board. General Saha, thank you very much for speaking to Republic Media Network. Let me straight away begin by asking you, first, your assessment of the current situation, the standoff that India and China is essentially staring at Eastern Ladakh. Many would say unprecedented because of the Lieutenant General talks that are taking place. But are you really hopeful that this is going to lead to some sort of a solution or this is just perhaps a long military hall that we are looking at? Okay, first of all, uh, it is not uh, unprecedented only because of the talks. Uh, the entire range of action uh, that have ensued you know, simultaneously, Eastern Ladakh with Sikkim across two military regions, that is also unprecedented. So therefore, unprecedented situations will have unprecedented consequences. So what we are seeing today is but one of that. Okay, and now what to expect from today? Uh, at the end of the day, you know, if and action has happened across two military regions. Obviously, it is being coordinated at the very highest level. So if it is coordinated at the very highest level, to expect a substantial outcome in one region, in one sector, which may not necessarily have planned the entire activity, I would not place too much of hope in terms of an outcome today. That said, I am quite certain that they will be able to at least, you know, set some sort of ground rules uh, for the future to unfold. Whether we are talking in the immediate term, whether we are talking in the medium or the long term. Dr. General Subhutasa, can I also then ask you with regards uh, to some General, areas General Saha. like for instance? Go ahead, Saman. So, sorry, uh, I Sorry, uh, Narendra, there the was some audio problem. There, but, uh, so, uh, if I can just Saha continue. Uh, uh, Shaman, you can take the next question. Uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So, sorry, Shaman, there's a delay. You go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead, Shaman. Lieutenant General Subhutra Saha, if I can then ask you, your understanding of the current situation, say for instance in the Galwan area itself, now this was you know, an untouched territory. What India seems to have also been having a problem with is the Chinese objection when there have been infrastructure built up at least on the Indian side of the LSE. Why should Chinese have a problem with that? Do you think that should be addressed today, at least in the military level talks, that China cannot perhaps have a problem with what's happening on the Indian side? Building infrastructure, that's our right. Yeah, that is our point of view because whatever uh, assessments are, that this reaction is because of the construction of the bridge, which has taken considerable effort, years, engineering solutions in very difficult terrain. So from our point of view, why should uh, China have a problem? But the irony is China feels threatened. And therefore, they are responding the way they are. Uh, why they feel threatened? Because it gives us the ability and the flexibility to build force at the correct time and space in the area of uh, Dalat Beg LD, Oldie, or what is also known as Subsector North, which uh, threatens Aksai Chin to the east. And if you go north to the area of Shaksgam, which was illegally ceded, I highlight once again, illegally ceded by Pakistan to China. General Saha, you know, uh, is you think there's a larger game at play with uh, China, a larger game at play? And the reason I'm saying that is uh, in the last 24 hours, 
and uh, usually the way we have seen it china doesn't really directly say anything uh you know through its government uh, agencies or uh, you know through uh, government functionaries it uses its uh, it uses its uh, you know mouthpieces to convey the message most often and 24 hours in, and in the build up to this meeting which you also agreed that it, it is uh, more than unprecedented let me tell you some of the headlines in china times which are the global times which is uh, a mouthpiece of the government of china uh, of, of of the chinese government one editorial that has been uh, written is india should not be instigated by us or media hyping that's a global times editorial india plays with fire spicing up g7 expansion so this is the second aspect of it one of course uh, talking about india's proximity to, to the us and our cooperation with the us especially during covid second talking about the g7 expansion which of course uh, donald trump also mentioned and india has responded positively and uh, third this is just a minor aspect but telling you uh, you know the 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 mood of the chinese government or their deceptive means one more headline says indian software and the software's name is remove china apps likely to drop punishment from china very interesting aspect likely to drop punishment from china and let me also tell you that uh, they have said finally they have uh, agreed and they have said that uh, the border situation generally stable and under control so what do you make of uh, the different noises that china is making and the entire cyber atle uh, you see a couple of points i do not uh, entirely agree with you that china does not use its uh, government officials it uses its government officials to give a set of message it uses the media to send out another set of message and what the media messages that you have highlighted has got certain subsets if you see what is the government message that came from the ambassador of china in new delhi he spoke peace okay now if you see the messages from the multiple new Yeah. newspapers that you have given out every newspaper has highlighted one or the other point for which china is feeling threatened whether it is expansion of g7 whether it is the range of diplomatic initiatives that have been put in place by the government whether it is the improving relationship with the united states or whether it is our uh, advances in the economic field each one is is manifest of some sort of a concern or threat and going back to shravan's question a little while back why in galwan that also expresses a yeah. threat which they perceive on the field <laughs> Lieutenant General Sir, as a member of the National Security Advisory Board, how is the government essentially looking at this particular situation? Are you all really hopeful that the military level talks would be enough? Would it suffice, or there is much more to it? This is perhaps just the beginning of at least trying to lay the ground for a future, perhaps further dialogue between both the nations. You see, uh, first of all, we have to see that the level at which the whole uh, situation that has unfolded the level at which it has been planned it is at certainly at a level higher than the military alone so to expect that uh, there'll be a military resolution or an exclusive military resolution i would not like to buy that okay as a member of the national security advisory board we have an advisory role what exactly is the government position i would advise reference to uh, government spokespeople persons or authorized people that said i mean it is a common appreciation to understand that uh, it is a combination of uh, military diplomacy and the multiple other elements of uh, the government that will have to come in to seek the ultimate resolution what is more important from a military point of view is you know you can, cannot carry on like this 
all these you know four or five agreements that we have they have all become unsustainable because china is choosing to ignore them only the intensity of ignoring is uh, worsening from time to time so therefore it is time to recognize that we have to find a, a much more uh, shall we say implementable methods of doing things a and that must get followed up ultimately in the resolution of this boundary you know you can't have uh, such an undefined left to perceptions boundary in a sensitive uh, region like this one final question left in general saha before i let you go can you actually trust the chinese because this has been the underlying question or the underlying sentiment that we have seen over the last couple of hours when many guests have come in and spoken to republic media network saying that can we really trust the chinese given the fact that we have seen what has happened in the past right from the time when prime minister vajpai actually had visit, visited beijing and there afterwards the informal summits that have actually taken place even after that the kind of transgressions intrusions that have essentially taken place and this entire dispute over the lse just doesn't seem to end well uh, i my response to your question may sound trite but it is true and it's very simple trust but verify one last question uh, general saha sorry shavan i just for, i'll just ask him that one la one last question because he also acknowledged uh, you know the four or five uh, uh, boundary agreements that we broke this morning would be the uh, you know highlight of india's response that uh, we are uh, you know honoring our commitment at the line of actual control uh, general saha before, before we let you go here on republic tv now forget about today forget about uh, the the near future i'm saying the near future uh, what do you think uh, india's uh, you know strategy should be vis-a-vis -vis handling china because it's not uh, we know that uh, when it comes to china it's not limited to just uh, the military standoff alone it's a it's a it's like a it's like a relationship that it encompasses uh, you know every aspect including trade uh, which of course india has taken a strong position on uh, including ties with america and uh, we know where india stands on that issue at least as of today and uh, whatever is happening in uh, you know uh, with with uh, the neighboring countries of course pakistan as well now what do you uh, rather how do you uh, see it as part of the national security board on on the way forward to deal with a country like china see that's a very interesting question it is actually a thesis for a phd dissertation anyway i don't mean to trivialize the question but the important thing is you know no, any relationship good. is two way and it will have multiple facets okay so if uh, one side is uh, going against principles rules that have been mutually agreed upon and uh, like you highlighted the kind of untruth which is being put out via the media so therefore there will be moments there will be occasions when you have to act tough and there will be moments when you have to work together okay we cannot say that for this uh, there will be a cast in stone for perpetuity kind of a solution i don't see that that's not a practical way to do things you get along depending on your interests and uh, depending on uh, what is important for you find ground where you can converge or find ground where you can cooperate and see how best you can avoid conflict okay that's a very interesting answer if i can say that general saha thank you for joining us here on republic tv